looking to add a filament runout sensor to your Ender 5 or even Ender 3. Well today I'm going to show you how using the TH3D Studios Easy Out sensor. Filament runout sensors like this one right here from TH3D Studios are a great way to make sure that your print never fails from your spool running out of filament. It's an easy and cheap upgrade that is very simple to do and today I'm going to show you how to do it. The first part of our installation is going to be determining if we want our sensor to be mounted or if we want it to be free floating. Um, there are many mounts similar to this that you can find on Thingiverse or TH3D Studios has a couple on their website that hold the filament sensor really nicely in place. Um, you can also just have it similar, similarly just sitting on the actual spool in line. Personally, I prefer this way because if you do have a jam, it's a little bit easier to, uh, or sorry, not a jam. If you do have a filament runout situation, it's a little bit easier to pull out the uh, remaining filament in your Bowden tube if it's just dangling there, as opposed to having to unmount it from the actual um, mount. However, I will say that if you're doing a print with a lot of retractions, this can sometimes bounce back and forth and hit up against your extruder making a clicking noise and I have previously thought many times that my extruder was clicking when it was really this. So if you want the peace of mind of your uh, sensor being securely mounted, go ahead and take a mount like this and find a good spot to put it on your printer. But because we're not going to be using a mount, I'm just going to throw that to the side and ours is just going to sit right up in this area. So now that we know how we're going to mount our sensor and where we're going to mount our sensor, we're going to want to run our wire for it. Now, I had previously ran this wire a, a while back um, when I did my wiring cleanup. So I'm not going to show you guys that, but I will just kind of show you how I ran the wire. Um, the wire goes from the extruder and it goes down through this loom. And then essentially it's just free at this end where we are going to connect it to our board and I saved that step for you guys obviously. Um, so we can go ahead and we can plug our sensor in and have it kind of attached where we want it to be. Uh, after that we'll go ahead and install it on the board side. So what we can do now is we can take our sensor and notice the arrow that's going to be the direction in which the filament is traveling. You want that pointed towards the extruder. And I'll just pull some filament and run that through there. You can see that this will fit nicely right up against that PTFE tube. And we have a nice little bit of room for guiding this filament if we ever need to pull it out. We can take our wire now and this simply just plugs right into the bottom of your filament runout sensor and snaps in place. So you can see how that will sit, just that. You can see how that will sit when the motor is actually moving. Next thing we'll do is take the appropriate sized Allen key and go ahead and take off these four bolts holding the bottom panel on. And make sure we hold this as we take off our bottom or our last bolt. Uh, the plate will fall and the plate does have our fan connected onto it. Of course I dropped the Allen key. We can take this off and carefully disconnect our fan. Go ahead and set that plate aside. What we'll do is we'll now wire, or run our filament runout sensor wire up and into the enclosure and over to the board. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not, but right here there's a little three pin header on the easy board light right above where your blue and yellow fan is. And what we're going to do is we can see it's labeled 
5 volt, ground, and signal at the very top. We're going to match that up with our wiring. Red being the 5 volt, black being the ground, white being the signal. So we're going to make sure that white is pointing up, red is pointing down, and we're going to install that right in there. If you do not have an easy board, yours is going to be a little bit different. If you don't have the easy board light, you're going to need one of these adapters that TH3D Studio sells. And what this does is this simply plugs into your ribbon cable for your LCD and uh, basically one side of the ribbon cable would go there, uh, the screen would plug into the white side, and then right here, this white connector is what you're going to plug in this to. So yes, you can still use the TH3D Studios filament runout sensor if you do not have a easy board or similarly like a SKR board, um, but you will need one of these. I think they're like $10 adapters. You can see it's even marked on there, LCD filament runout sensor. So that's what you're going to have to need. Uh, no big deal. Still feasible though. Um, now that we got this plugged in, we can go ahead and reinstall our back plate and we'll be ready to do some firmware work. All right, now that we got our back plate on, we can flip our printer back over and we can just ensure that it's wired correctly by making sure that the green light is showing on your filament sensor. If you don't have a light, there's a good chance that you plugged in your uh, cord backwards. So let's go ahead and take the SD card out of this, go ahead and bring it over to the printer, and we're just gonna adjust some firmware really quickly using the TH3D Easy compiler. If you have a Easy board, that's the best way to do it or you can do it your traditional route um, by editing your config.h files. I'm not super knowledgeable on that. I've never done it that way because I've always used TH3, TH3D boards in my machines. So that's the way I'm gonna show you guys and that's the way I recommend. If you do have a stock board, this will not work for you. You will have to use the other uh, way of editing your firmware and there are plenty of YouTube videos online on how to do that, but we're gonna be using the TH3D Easy Compiler. All right, so we've worked our way over to the filament sensor area of the unified firmware config, and we're just gonna enable the Easy out. Uh, the second option down here is for if you have your filament sensor, or filament sensor mounted, and what that's gonna do is set the unload length to zero so that nothing backs up. Um, you're going to click that if you have it mounted. Obviously, we don't. So we're just going to go on to the next step. All right, now that we got our firmware loaded onto the SD card, the next thing to do is to place the SD card into the printer and go ahead and power it up. It's going to do a lawn beep to let you know that it has detected a new firmware. And it's going to load. And we're going to have to do one more thing, and that is going to be resetting our EEPROM. So we're going to go ahead and go down to Configuration, scroll down to Reset EEPROM, and go ahead and reset that. It'll beep to let you know it's complete. We can go back, back into our info screen, and we are ready to print. We can double check that our filament sensor is active and turned on by going into configuration. Scroll down to runout sensor and make sure that that says on. Because we did reset our EEPROM, we are going to have to redo our probe Z offset for the um, easy ABL sensor. But that's a simple, easy thing to do. Um, but with that being said, that is how to install the TH3D Easy Out filament sensor on your Creality Ender 5, Ender 3, any printer that uses the TH3D Easy Board. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well. I seem to post a lot more stuff on Instagram than here. Um, and again, thank you for watching, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Have a good one.